Hi everyone, welcome to the Color Sensor Shootout Part 2. Today we're going to be looking at the Broadcom APDS9960. It's that little sensor right in the middle there. The actual module itself is from Adafruit. And this isn't just a color sensor module, this is actually a multi-purpose module. So it's got color sensing, light detection, proximity detection. You can use it to do things like uh, close gesture things. It's quite a versatile little sensor. It's small, there's not a lot on it. It uses I squared C, so we're using an SCL and SDA connections that go directly to the Arduino Nano. It goes to uh, A5 and A4 on the Nano, which is the same as the Uno. We were going to do a video today on the TCS34725, but unfortunately it looks like my module is defective. I'm getting bizarre spikes when I'm trying to read color out of it. I just get random data pretty much 90% of the time. I've contacted Adafruit support about it and I'll post it on the forums and hopefully I'll get a resolution sometime soon so I can do a part three on this particular sensor. But today we're going to look at the APDS9960 and see how good it is with color detection. I've got my lighting turned down really dark. One of the things that with this particular sensor, uh, the same with the, the TCS sensor over here, is that they have a very wide angle so they can detect color movement and stuff from quite an obtuse angle. So I wanted to make sure that the lighting was low enough in here that I didn't get a lot of other bounce influencing the sensor. The other thing that you might notice is there's no LED on here. So this particular module has no ability to shine a light that'll allow the surface it's detecting to bounce off it and come back into the sensor. So it'll be interesting to see how this affects color detection. Now, same setup as before, we've got our Arduino Nano. I've got a color OLED display. The code is identical between the two projects, except obviously I'm using the library for this particular sensor this time. And the code that actually reads the sensor data has changed because it's using I squared C. Interestingly, it doesn't need any type of calibration, which is great because it simplified the code. And the actual code to read the data is, is fantastic. It's like two lines of code compared to all of the additional code and maths I had to do on the previous TCS module. So let's plug it in and let's have a look and see how it goes. Let's hope it boots. There we go. So there's no calibration pass. It goes straight into color detection mode. And as you can see, it thinks it's detecting blue right now. And that's because there's a bit of bounce coming off the mat. So if I pick it up, I'm looking just directly up right now. And it's using just light bouncing from the roof, coming back down. As you can see, the, the values are very close. It's detecting just a, a dull gray, slightly more blue. And it could also be because the mount holding my camera is made it out of blue PLA. So let's jump straight in and grab some green and see what it detects. So get the green closer. Okay, that's not too bad. That's about two centimeters away. And it's you know reading very low values because there's no light to bounce the green off back into the sensor. But the highest value it is reading is actually green, which is pretty cool. I wonder how far away it can be if I take it away again. And if I bring it in, okay, it's got a pretty decent range. Here we go, what's that? That's about seven centimeters, I'd say. Okay, so that's green, let's try blue. Now it already thinks there's blue there, that's fine. But you can see by the change of data. It's definitely reading more blue than anything else. It's pretty much reading black, but as you can see, the blue value is higher, so it detects blue. What about red? Let's get my trusty coffee cup. No, this is not the same cup as in the last video. This is a fresh one from today, because I drink too much coffee. As you can see there, it's picking up red as the highest value. Now this is very, very low light that I'm doing this in right now. Once again, the camera picks up a lot of extra light compared to the environments in right now. So we got three accurate readings from three different colors, but if you notice, there was no swatch in the middle. Nothing at all, it's pretty much showing black. And the reason for that, again, is because there's nothing really bouncing a lot of light back into the sensor. So why don't we grab a torch. Here's a torch. Okay, I'm gonna place the torch just here. I'm gonna try again. This time, we're going to get light bounce. Now, we've got the green, no problem. You can actually see now we've got some swatch color in the middle. Now it's nowhere near as close to the color that it is. 
bit brighter in the camera view, but it's definitely using the bounce light to detect a better result. So as you can see, the, the green value now is massive compared to the other values, you know, 22 for red, up to the 80s for green. So that works pretty well. Let's grab the blue. Okay, it's struggling to display the blue. If I get my sensor a little bit closer. But once again, it's doing a more accurate read of the blue. So this is performing quite well. It's not fantastic as an actual, you know, what color is this? But it's pretty good. Okay, the red's not working so great. Kind of see. The problem with the red, it's not a shiny surface, but it's definitely detecting much more red, twice the value of red than any other color. So there we have it. This is the APDS9960 color sensor. It's a Broadcom chip, and the actual module is from Adafruit. I think Sparkfun also have one. I believe you can buy the actual sensors for about $4 Australian each. You can get them from DigiKey or RS components. It's, it's pretty good. It, it actually has done a much better job than I thought it would, considering that there's no LED on there and it's a multi-purpose sensor. And it's super easy to implement. I squared C, it's just two wires. I mean, the only other two on here are the VCC and ground. It's two wires and the actual code is like three lines of code. You initialize the module. As long as it's working, you tell it to go into color mode and you read the color data. And it gives you back an RGB value. I will do a future video about the gesture and proximity sensor. But in terms of color sensing, great. This is a win as well. So far we're two of two. I could use either of these modules for my gate detection program. If you wanted to catch up on what the first video was, please just click on this link right there where we go through a TCS 230 module that's from China and it's only a couple of dollars. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, thumbs up if you think it's worth it. Thumbs down if you don't. Don't forget to subscribe and share, and until next time, catch you later. Bye.